everyone, my name is Kristen Kirk and I'm an elementary art teacher for Johnson County Schools. Today's video is sponsored by the Johnson County Arts Council. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to create a landscape in watercolor featuring birch trees. So let's get started. Let's talk about the materials we're going to use today. So today, I'm going to be using a piece of paper to create my painting on. You can use watercolor paper if you have it, or a piece of paper that's a little bit thicker. So I am going to also be using masking tape. So if you have masking tape or painter's tape at home, go ahead and grab that out. We are also going to be using a watercolor paint palette. You can get these at Walmart, you can get them at Target, you can find them at most craft stores. You can also use watercolor in the tubes. So either one will work. And then I have a water cup and a couple of paint brushes. And I'm also going to be using Sharpies. Now, if you don't have masking tape, you can still create this project with me. We're just going to make your trees separately from your painting. And I will teach you that today as well. So let's get started and I'm going to grab my smaller masking tape and if you don't have it, that's fine. Just use whatever size you have and I'm going to fold it back so the top of it has a little rectangle that you can hold that is not sticky. This is going to be like a tab for the trees and I'm going to go to my paper and I'm going to let the part that is not sticky hang off the top so it's like a handle for later when I peel this and then I'm going to lay down the tree across my paper. So I'm going to stop about right there because I want to have my smaller trees in the background and I'm going to do my larger trees in the foreground which will be closer to us. So I'm going to grab one more piece of the skinnier tape that I have and I am going to find another spot that I would like to put a tree. And I might make that one just a little bit shorter. And then I'm going to grab my larger masking tape and I'm going to do a tree that goes in a little bit further because it's going to be closer to us. So again, I folded that back to make a part that is not sticky to hold on to. And just decide how far you want it to come down. It could go all the way down. Um, I'm going to stop close to the bottom. And you can have three trees. You can have four. You can have as many as you would like. So again... I'm going to place this on my paper. So now we are going to start painting over our tape. We're going to paint right over it because the tape is going to form a resist for the paint. Now if you don't have tape, you are going to paint the exact same way. You just won't have the tape on your paper. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to do the ground first. So I am going to be mixing yellows and different shades of green for this. It is important that you have the ground where it at least covers the bottom of your tape. So that way our tape is on the ground. So I'm going to grab a paintbrush. I'm just using a round brush. You can use whichever brush you have at home that you are comfortable with. And I think I'm going to start with yellow first. And I'm just going to dip into the yellow. And I'm going to go... And I'm just going to kind of skip around with the yellow. You can go side to side. If you want to do brush strokes that go up and down instead, you can do that. Whatever you are comfortable with. That will add some texture to your paper if you go up and down. So I've started with the yellow. And just remember, with watercolor, the more water that you add, the lighter your color is going to be. And the less water you use and the more you dip into a color, the darker it's going to stand out. So I might go back into the yellow. And some parts I might leave like really bright. And some spots I might let be lighter. And you can leave some little gaps of white because we're going to fill that in with green. So if you are using the watercolor in tubes, I just put mine like on a styrofoam tray. And you just add a little bit of water to it. So I might go into this brighter green. And I might start filling in some of these little gaps of white with the green. And let it run into the yellow. And it's okay if your tape gets folded up like mine did just there. It won't matter when we go to peel it. As long as it's stuck down good, we're good to go. 
So then I'm going to go back into my water cup and rinse this out a little bit because I'm going to go into the green in this palette because I think it's a little bit darker. So I'm going to dip into it a little bit more because I want this to be a bit of a darker color. And I might go in here and just leave random spots a little bit darker. It just gives us some value having those different shades. And if you go off your paper a little bit, that's fine. You can always wipe it up when we're done. Just don't paint the same spot a whole lot if you're using like regular paper or watercolor paper because it can make your paper rip if it gets too wet. So I might go into this other shade of green just to see what happens. So just get the look that you want. And then I might go back in. Also, you can do a few of these and see which one you like the most. Because we're going to have to wait for things to dry. So you could go ahead and make a couple of different ones. So that way you have plenty to choose from. And you might like making these so much you want to make more than one. This is just such an easy project. It's simple, it's fun. My students love it. So I'm just gonna stop there with the ground for now. And I am going to wash out my brush really good because I'm gonna be doing the sky and we don't wanna mix the green into our sky color. So I'm gonna do a sunset. If you would like to do a blue sky, you could dip into blue and you could go ahead and do that. But for this, I think I'm gonna do a sunset. So I might go into once my brush is nice and clean, I'm going to dry that off a little bit. I am going to go into maybe yellow again first. And I'm just going to skip around in my sky because in parts of my sunset, it might be more yellow. In some parts, it might be more orange or red. It's going to make it vibrant and stand out. And it's just a lot of fun. So I'm going to go into maybe this color red. Maybe add a little bit more. Okay, that's more of an orange. Just be careful not to let that get into your grass because you don't want to turn your grass brown on accident. And then maybe I'll go in, wash out my brush, and I might go into the red and this because it might be a little different. And don't be afraid to go right over your tape. The tape is protecting your paper. And if you don't have tape, you're just going straight across your paper because we are going to make trees and glue them over top of this in just a little while. So I'm going to go back into my yellow. And maybe that spot has a lot of yellow in it. So everybody's sunset is going to look a little bit different. That's what's going to make it unique. It doesn't have to look just like mine. Okay, so I'm just going to stop there and we are going to let your paper dry. If you would like, you could go on and you could paint another background so you can make more than one of these and just let them both dry together. And then I'll meet you back here in just a second and we can get started on the next step when it's dry. Thanks. So I'm back with two different examples that are dry. So I've already peeled off one tree. If you see a little bit of paint on the edges, don't worry about that. We can cover that up when we go to design your tree. So I also have another one that I did a blue sky and I did not have tape down. So I can show those of you that just are going to make your tree separately how to do that in case you didn't have tape. And I did not show you earlier, so really quickly, I'll just show you how I did that blue sky in case someone wants to go back and do that. Um, what I did is I just did kind of a swirling motion in the sky and kind of had fun with it and did one shade of blue. You can also mix different colors of blue. So I'm going to go in with that. 
And I'm gonna add some more water because that's super bright. So what I did to make that sky is I just did kind of a swirling motion in the sky, kind of like S shapes. And I left some white gaps. And you can go in and do darker blue in some spots, lighter blue in some areas. And we do the ground the same way. So I just did swirling little motions for that. So I'm gonna lay that out of the way. I just wanted you to see how in case you wanted to do that. So let's go ahead and peel this tape. Now you'll see why we made those little tabs. So you're gonna hold that part, hold your paper down and be very careful. Make sure your paper's dry before you do this because you don't want it to rip because it's wet. And just pull it slowly because if you pull it too fast, you might accidentally rip some of your sky off that you didn't want to rip. So I'm going to put that to the side. And this is one of the fun parts, especially my students. They love peeling off the tape. And this is when we are going to start using those Sharpies. So I am going to be using two different Sharpies. If you only have one size, you can use the size that you have. It'll still turn out really nice. So I'm going to toss that tape. And now I am going to grab a skinnier Sharpie and a larger Sharpie. And what I am gonna do, my smaller trees, I'm gonna outline most of it with the thinner lines. We're gonna change up our line weights. So in the background on this one, I might do some thin lines. I'm not gonna outline the whole tree. I'm just gonna do some parts of it. So I might kind of skip around. And some parts, I might let it be a little bit thicker than others. Just have fun with it. And notice my lines are not straight. I know that sometimes the tape gives you that harsh straight line, but trees are organic. They're found in nature. They are not perfect shapes. So everybody's tree is gonna be a little different. We won't, don't want it to be a perfect straight line because then it won't look as realistic. And I'm gonna go ahead with the thicker Sharpie and I'm gonna do the same to this one. Maybe some parts I'll make the line a little bit thicker. Some parts can be thinner. I could even use that skinny or Sharpie. And we're only outlining like the sides for now. Then you can go in and we can start adding texture like you would see on the bark. So I'm just gonna go in and maybe you can do some little lines that come in. They can wave and wobble. You don't want this to be a pattern. It doesn't have to be a pattern when you're working on this. Um, each part can be a little bit different. It can be kind of random. I might do a line right in the middle. I'm just doing some little wiggles with the Sharpie. You could do straight side to side lines. You can let them curve in. You could do a wavy line. Some of those can go up and down. You can add way more texture than I am if you want to have more lines. That is completely up to you. So that's one tree done. And then on the larger tree, I'm gonna go in and like on this part, I can just take and do like some thicker textures. You can even kind of go to the side like that and have a lot of texture there to kind of cover up where the paint went in a little bit. And we are going to be adding a little bit of brown paint to these in a few minutes to add some shadows so that'll kind of cover it up. And again, you can add way more texture to your trees if you would like. making marks, little lines. You can look at birch trees online to look at how you can see all the different textures on the bark and get inspired by that. So we're gonna do this to all of your trees. And those of you that did not use tape and you have a background like this one, um, we're just gonna draw some rectangles for trees and fill them in just like this and then we're gonna cut them out and I'll show you how in just a second. I really like collaging things and using mixed media. 
So either way, it works out really well. I've taught this lesson where my students have used tape. I've done this lesson where we made the trees separately. I did a winter version of this project for my younger kids and I even had some of their parents do it with them and they really loved the project and they turned out really nice. And again, I'm not doing perfectly straight lines on purpose because I want this to look a little bit more natural like you would actually find them in nature. And again, you can add way more texture than I just did. And just in case you did not know, the reason I am using Sharpie is because it is a permanent marker. When I go to paint over it, because it is permanent, it will not run. So make sure what you are using is a permanent marker if it's not a Sharpie, because if it's a washable marker, it will get messed up when we go to paint on a shadow. So just keep that in mind. If you don't have a Sharpie at home, you could use something else that will resist like a black oil pastel or a black crayon or a permanent pen. Now, for those of you that did not have tape, I went ahead and drew one tree. I did it the same way that we just designed those. I just drew two wobbly lines going down my paper. You would cut it out and you will glue it where you would like for it to go on yours and you'll be called up to where we are. So now I'm gonna take a small brush and I am going to add a little bit of a shadow with brown paint on the side of my trees. So since this tree has a little bit of the orange showing up here, I'm gonna do my shadow on the right hand side. So I'm just gonna keep that shadow on the right of all of my trees and I'm not gonna make it a perfectly harsh straight line. I'm gonna make it a little wobbly just like I did my lines on here. So I'm gonna grab my brush and I'm gonna go in with some brown paint. I'm gonna test this out on this first because that's a little darker than I wanted. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more water because if you add the water, see it's lightened up now. And I'm gonna go in and on the right of this tree, I'm adding a little bit of a shadow. Maybe I'll get a little more brown. And again, I'm only adding a tiny bit. I'm not making a straight line. Kind of skipping around with that. If you want to leave the shadow out, you can do that. Again, I'm just kind of skipping around. Okay, so that's how I wanted mine to look. Yours may look different. Decide on how you want yours to look. If you like the project like it is right now, you can stop now and you're done. If you would like to, you could go in and we could add some grass. We can do that with a paintbrush or we can do that with crayons. You can decide what you want to use. Some of us are really good at painting and some of us might like a crayon or something that you can make a straight line with that you may not be able to do with a paintbrush and we could go around the bottom of your trees and do some little lines and we can add little dots for flowers. So grab some crayons if you have it. If you don't, you can grab old pastels or you can grab a small paintbrush and I will show you how you can add some grass and flowers. See you in a second. So we're back now. Um, I have a small paintbrush that I'm gonna use to do grass. Um, you do not have to paint this. We can also do these same lines for grass with a crayon or old pastel. Um, those are really easy to draw with. So if you wanted to do this in paint, you can grab a little bit of maybe a darker green with your brush. And I went ahead and I laid out where I'm going to glue down the trees on this one if you had to glue your trees down. So on that one, I'll show you like around the bottom of your tree once it's glued on. 
you can go in and we can do some little lines like this. If you turn your brush, you can kind of make thinner lines and it can look like something like this. And you could go in and over top of that, you could go in with a little bit of a color on your brush, like maybe red or purple, whatever color you want your flowers to be. And you can do some like little dots to look like flowers on it. So that's how you can do it with a paintbrush. For me though, I like to use a crayon or oil pastel. I'm really big on mixed media. I love that. So you could go in and do the same thing, but you could do it with a crayon and you could draw some little lines for the grass if you wanted. It might come up on the tree. And then you could go in and you could do like some little dots of color and the colors that you want your flowers to be. Because from a distance, it will look like there are flowers there, even though it might look a little fuzzy up close. So you can do it that way or with the paintbrush. You can even do your grass with the old pastels or you can leave it out entirely. That is completely up to you. So this, the old pastels kind of blend a little bit more. They're a little bit more painterly than crayons. So you can add as much grass as you would like to this. You can have some spots where we don't see flowers, but you can keep adding those little textures. So in the distance, I'm just doing some little lines because they're gonna be a little bit smaller because it's in the background. And your grass, of course, could be longer as you get to the foreground. So I've just been going back and forth with light green and dark green. Some areas you might not want to add flowers at all. You might want to do different colors. You might want to leave the flowers out completely. That's up to you. I hope you love this project as much as I do and I hope you enjoyed making it. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to the Johnson County Arts Council. I just wanted to share with you a finished version of this project. This is one that I made to show my elementary school students recently when we made this project. So I wanted to share another version with you so you can see what it looks like finished. Thanks.